For general photography, like snapshot photography, tripods are seldom used, but for close-up and for macro photography, uh, they're almost always used. And for focus stacking, they're pretty much mandatory. Now, we all know tripods are three-legged devices that serve to elevate the camera to a given height and then stabilize it. On the top of the three legs, the camera is mounted to a plate. And on that plate is usually a one-quarter inch or three-eighth inch mounting screw that protrudes upwards. And that screw receives a tripod head on which sits the camera body. Now, although camera bodies can be screwed directly to the mounting plate on the top of the tripod, most often the camera is fastened to a mounted head, a ball head or a pan tilt head, which itself is fastened to the plate on the top of the tripod. The ball head usually has some form of quick release clamp to mount and remove the camera body in seconds. Quick release plates are really important to have. Otherwise, you risk damaging the sensitive screw thre threads that are in the base of your camera. If you do that sooner or later, you're gonna lose that, those threads and that's gonna be a real expensive proposition. It's just much easier to have a quick release plate. I don't know anyone who doesn't use one. Now, there are all kinds of tripods and they're made from all manner of materials and, 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 you know, and designed for all kinds of purposes. Some are very heavy, and mostly they're used for studio work, and they're just great. Nothing like a heavy tripod if you can lift it or carry it around. And others are lightweight and uh, suitable for travel or field work. Now here I'm mostly concerned with tripods, tripods that, fit, uh, that are fit for carrying out into the field, light ones. The kind that we would use for outdoor macro and close-up work. So I'm going to concentrate on those, but don't forget about the really heavy studio ones because uh, I would much prefer having them if I didn't have to carry them around. Tripods come in two general formats, with and without uh, a central, a center column to which the ball head and camera are attached, and that column can be raised or lowered. The consensus among ma macro shooters that I know is that tripods with a center column are inherently less stable than those without one. And this has certainly been my experience as well. So I try to avoid them. Having used both types, I use center column type tripods only in a studio and only if these are very heavy tripods that you would not even want to carry outside in the field. In the case of a very heavy tripod, the center column is perfectly usable, especially in a studio. Still, I would never buy another one. Field tripods, on the other hand, need to be both lightweight and sturdy, which are kind of two opposite qualities. In other words, macro photographers are always searching for a field tripod that is both lightweight and sturdy at the same time. Now, just something about my experience with tripods. It, it took me many, many years to take this advice. Nevertheless, I'm going to pass it on to you. It is far, far better to buy a really good quality tripod for macro use than it is to try and get by on a beater or a cheap one. The common thought, at least what, that I used to have, was that the camera and the lenses cost a lot. So let's save some money on the tripod and get a better one later. That's not a good idea, and there are several reasons why. For one, a cheap tripod general, generally will not give you the stability you need for close-up work. In particular, if you plan to do focus stacking, or much less like multi-tier panoramas, stacked, you need a rock-solid tripod for that kind of work. Secondly, if you purchase a really good tripod, you can always sell it for a good amount later if you fall out of love with photography. I have a whole closet of cheap aluminum tripods that can't be sold, they won't sell, that I purchased while trying to avoid just one good tripod. 
they are and were even then worthless. Worse, their inherent instability and their heavier weight set my learning curve back, I don't know how long, but it was a lot. It was a big mistake on my part. That being said, um, what do we need in the way of a tripod for close-up macro and focus stacking work? I'm assuming that we're all nature photographers. Uh, otherwise, just get yourself a big heavy one and, and work inside. Right now, carbon fiber tripods or other ultralight alloys are what you need for field work. Similar to fiberglass, carbon fiber is both strong and lightweight. And uh, more and more of the manufacturers are producing them, so they continue to be less expensive, but still expensive enough. And more appear on the used market all the time, so, so look for one of those. Carbon fiber alone is not the whole answer because there are many carbon fiber tripods that are, that are just too small or too weak for constant field work, especially if, if you're going to mount a large ball head on it and then a DSLR on top of that, and then a hefty lens on the DSLR. So get a tripod that will hold your rig easily, not just barely. When it comes to tripods and the loads that they can carry, go for more, not less strength. You might get by with a lighter tripod right now, but down the road, as you start to add more weight to your camera, various add-ons, longer lenses, heavier lenses, or you might want to start to do panoramic focus stacking. Or even more likely, you just get serious and don't want that camera and lens to move as you stack 100 layers. I'm not the lone ranger in giving this advice. This is pretty much gospel for focus stackers. A good tripod may mean you don't have one more lens, but a ton of lenses and one lousy tripod, and none of those lenses are working as they should. So get a good tripod. You, you'll love it every day that you work with it. I mean, I just can't say enough about tripods. So another question is, should you get a three or four legged sectioned tripod? Now, most tripods come with legs that either have three or four adjustable sections. The only reason that I know of for having four rather than three leg sections is because the tripod folds up into a more compact package for hiking or storage or going on airplanes. Having used both types, I always opt for the three-legged version. They weigh less and they're inherently more stable and solid. I no longer even consider four-legged, I mean four-section legs when I, when I get a new tripod. Only those with three sections. So this is the voice of experience speaking to you. Now, as far as center columns, we talked about it a bit. I no longer will purchase a tripod for field work that has a center column. Or if it has one, I quickly remove it and consign it to the closet. No matter how strong that center column is, in a, even in a lightweight tripod especially, it will never be as sturdy as a simple three-legged tripod with a mounting plate and uh, no column. Those columns invariably wiggle and wobble just when you don't want that. And we're, again, we're talking to focus stackers here. Focus stacking, you're not just taking one shot. You're taking a whole lot of shots, and even one of those shots can, can ruin the whole series and have to be removed. So develop the discipline of not using a center column except, as mentioned earlier, if you're in the studio with very heavy tripods. Um, so what ones to buy? I, I can only tell you from my experience, but you should, you know, find your own. Um, I don't use Manfrotto uh, tripods. I mean, I have them. Uh, I don't like them. So f you have to forgive me. I just, I use Gizzo and really right stuff tripods for most of my work. An example of a nice but finally not quite sturdy enough tripod is the Gizzo G1228 Mountaineer Reporter MK2. This carbon fiber tripod is lightweight. It's about 3.4 pounds and it's easy enough to carry in the field and it's rated to carry 17.6 pounds. However, with a big DSLR like a Nikon 3 or D3S and a good size lens like a Nikon 70 to 200 or whatever, it's not sturdy enough for the best macro work. 
especially if you add something like a multi-tier panning rig or whatever else you might want to attach on top of it. This tripod runs about 600 bucks, but uh, I think it's been discontinued. But there's other ones that uh, are like it that are usable. But it, it just does not cut it. So another tripod I've used and still sometimes use is the Gitso GT3531S. It's a systematic six times carbon fiber tripod with three section legs and no center column. It weighs 3.7 pounds and the diameters of the individual legs are wide enough for real stability. It's rated to support 39.6 pounds. Now this tripod can support a big DSLR with a big lens and even a full multi-tiered uh, panel rig. Uh, as of 2011, they cost about 780 bucks at B&H. But the very best tripod I have, and the one that I use all the time, is a Really Right Stuff Series 3 tripod. This is a really incredible tripod, and I re recommend it highly if you can afford it. Well, I, I like the idea of the ultra lightweight tripods, especially early on when I was learning. But when the chips are down and when the wind is blowing and I have a fully tricked out camera rig on a light tripod, the truth is they're just too unsteady to warrant their use. The Gitso GT3531S, it's a little bit heavier to carry. It's a little more expensive, but with it I always feel the stability it provides when I'm out shooting. I would never go back to the lighter tripods just to save money or a pound or so. I mean, I have a number of light carbon fiber tripods that just uh, basically I use them as light stands now in a, in a studio to hold things. As far as carrying tripods, this is just a personal thing. I'm no longer really a long distance hiker so I don't carry a tripod in a backpack. I carry a tripod with a ball head attached and DSLR, all, and I carry it over my shoulder, all that whole bit, and I, I know that everyone says don't do it. Um, I usually stay within a mile of where I'm parked, and although it gets heavy at times, especially you know, the longer I stay out, it's not a big problem. Those of you who hike great, great distances may prefer to compromise the weight and style of the tripod you carry. As mentioned, I carry my rig in my hands or with the DSLR protruding over my right shoulder and behind my back, pointing down with lens cap off. I've done this for many, many years and I never have had an accident, never had the DSLR become detached or hit anything. I carry my lens cover in my pocket as I walk, not on the camera. And I do tend to use a clear UV filter over the lens. One thing, however, with tripods, the connection between the tripod, the top of the tripod, and the bottom of the tripod head, the ball head, has to be on securely because it can gradually loosen until the head falls right off, carrying the camera with it especially if you walk with the rig over your shoulders like I do. So keep it tight. Um, some tripods have removable leg tips or they have a hook to hang weights from in their center for greater stability. It, that hook extends down underneath the legs from the main plate. These parts can gradually loosen and fall off and I've had it happen. So you can tighten them, otherwise you're gonna lose them. And to, to tighten them, you use a thread locking paste, like called, I think there's one called thread locker. And you paste these parts. It makes, makes it so they don't vibrate. It makes it more difficult to take them off, but it also prevents the threads from loosening. But they, you know, they are pretty easy to get off. Um, they are harder to eventually remove, but will save you from ruining your equipment. The tripods, I use have quick lock legs, so extending them and retracting them is easy and by now pretty automatic. I hold the rig and tripod against my body or by one hand and I open or close each leg section with the other. Sometimes I will place the longest extended leg on the ground while I'm adjusting the other legs. Opening, closing and adjusting tripod le uh, legs are just what I consider good exercise. 
Of course, I make use of the fact that the legs not only can be adjusted by sections, but that each leg can be spread out 24, 55, 90 degrees from vertical so that many strange places can be accommodated. As a general rule, I try not to have the legs open any longer out extended than I have, than I have to in order to maximize stability. In other words, if I have the legs splayed to say the 90 degree position, I try not to have the leg sections, the three sections also extended any more than necessary. Maybe say a little bit about how I use my tripods. I have differ several different styles of tripods that I use for various purposes. My Gizzo GT3531S, as described above, is it's my main tripod for field use. I call it my dry tripod. I have another, a couple older Gizzo carbon fibers that are wet tripods. I use them in streams, swamps, wherever the tripod is going to get wet. Now, why two types? For one, Gizzos are not even a little bit fun to clean. If I use the wet Gizzo in swamps all summer, it requires a real cleaning before winter sets in. So I try to keep the two separate. I also have a very heavy aluminum Gizzo with a big old center column that I use in the studio. It's way too heavy to cart around in the field, but it's just perfect for studio work. And I keep it set up with a ball head on it and so on. Then I have a Gizzo monopod. I don't, I don't use it a lot, but sometimes I use it when I'm doing macro shots of fast moving insects and so on. It gives me just enough stability to catch one-off shots of bees, wasps, and whatever, whatever's moving too fast for still life. I kind of lean into them and, and capture them. Then I have several tripods that are designed for video work, chiefly two Sacklers and one Cartoni. These are video tripods uh, that have fluid heads and make video work easier. And last but not least, I have a um, Really Right Stuff TVC 33S Versa 3 Versa Series 3 tripod. I use it mostly in the studio, studio but sometimes outside. Uh, it's just the best tripod for stacking work. It's solid and light. Uh, it's a dream tripod for me. Anyway, that's about it for tripods. Since mostly I do macro and close-up photography along, you know, combined with focus stacking, I use a tripod just all the time. I also do some landscape photography and that, that requires a tripod as well. So I'm pretty much wedded to my tripod.